Are you tired of hand watering your rows of crops? Are you tired of overhead watering options leaving your plants soggy and wet and thus prone to disease, rot, and fungus? Drip irrigation delivers water right where it's needed, directly to the roots of the plants. The hardest part of drip irrigation is getting all the right components. Drip Depot irrigation kits were made to solve that exact problem. Drip Depot kits? come with everything needed to create a complete system. All you need to do is find how long you'll need your drip tape runs to be, assemble it, and never hand water for hours ever again. Now, here's how to set up a Drip Depot irrigation kit for small farms. Before you get started, it's a good idea to leave your tubing directly in the sun. As tubing gets warm, it relaxes and gets much easier to work with. The first step to the setup is attach the vacuum breaker to your garden hose or spigot. While you're installing these parts, it's a good time to check the female connections for the gaskets inside. Hose threaded parts seal when the male portion connects to the gasket and the female connection. After the vacuum breaker comes the filter to catch debris, followed by the pressure regulator, which lowers pressure to protect your system. If you have a timer to automate your system, you can place it before the vacuum breaker. Last is the hose to tubing adapter connecting your main line. These parts thread on just like a normal garden hose. The kit we chose comes with two zones, but the steps you'll follow for a single zone setup are exactly the same. The only difference is that a two zone system uses a splitter or multi-zone timer as we did here. Next, we're going to connect the mainline tubing to our head assembly. Push the tubing on over the barb, and then turn the locking nut to secure the tubing on over the barb like this. The fittings for your mainline will vary depending on the position of your water source. If your water source is in the corner of your plot, you can easily run your header row straight from the water source. If your source is in the middle, you may want to add a T for a single zone system or elbows like we're doing for a two zone system. We just added these parts using the easy to use kit customization tool while selecting the kit. I'm going to run the main line tubing for each zone from the head assembly down here to the base of our field. There, I'm going to have to cut into it so I can install a 90 degree elbow so we can turn our main line tubing to go perpendicular to our field. Run your mainline tubing to the last row, then unwind the other end up to the elbow fitting at your water source. The kit comes with staples that you can use to hold your mainline in place. We've got our mainline ran, and you'll notice right now it is one solid piece of mainline. But you'll recall this is a two zone system. So what we're going to do to zone this is we're going to make a cut into the mainline. We're going to connect zone one, which goes down this way. And we'll connect zone two to go this way. Cut the tubing to length, attach the end cap, and connect it to the elbow so both zones tie into the head assembly. Now that we've completed our mainline tubing run, we're ready to install our drip tape. First, we need to connect the adapters that will allow us to connect the drip tape to the mainline. To do so, we're simply going to punch a hole in the sidewall of the three quarter inch mainline tubing using the red 345 punch. Try to get it as far on the side as possible so that way your fitting is more horizontal than vertical. We're going to install one of our seven millimeter takeoff adapter valve. Just push the adapter into the hole until you hear a pop. If you tug on the adapter and it stays in place, it's good to go. Now we're going to add all of these adapters into the header row. Make sure your valves are closed to prevent dirt from entering the system. If you make an unnecessary punch, you can use a 0.4 inch goof plug to plug up the hole. All right, we've got all our takeoff adapters installed. Now it's time to run the actual drip tape. Since the rows are particularly long, we're gonna use some equipment to help us unroll it. Okay, now that we got some of our tape run, let's connect it to our takeoff adapter. This works a lot like the fittings we were doing for our mainline tubing. All right, I'll show you how. Simply slide the tape on over the barb with the emitters facing up and turn the locking nut to secure it in place. At the end of the row, all you have to do is cut the tape. If you cut the tape, watch out for the emitters. Try not to cut through them. With all of our tape lines ran, it's time to put on our end caps. The end caps go on just like the other fittings we've been working with today. These end caps, just like the end caps we used on our mainline tubing, are also threaded so that you can easily flush your system. It's a good idea to flush your tape system regularly to get any debris that might get inside flushed out the end. The turbulent action inside the tape will dislodge debris and see it flushed right out the back. With our tape lines capped, I'm gonna go ahead and stake them in place. Now when I do this, it's best to make sure that the stake just goes over the fitting, not over the tape. While you're putting on your threaded end caps, it's a good idea to check the threading at the end of each one as you apply it. Sometimes during transportation, they get jostled loose and better to find out now than when you do your first watering cycle and see water come leaking out the end of it. So while you're putting on your end caps, give each one a little tight and a little test, make sure it's secure. Before we install our drip tape, we're gonna flush our main line. This is to make sure any debris that got in during installation, and some almost always does, gets flushed out before we connect our drip tape. To flush the system, all you have to do is remove the threaded end cap, turn on the water, 
and let water run long enough for water to come from the water source out the end of your tubing and let it run for a few moments. Let water run out of the ends of your drip tape lines as well. Then turn off the system and cap all the lines off. During the first watering cycle is the perfect time to walk the system to check for any problems. Check where your drip tape and takeoff adapters connect to your main line and make sure they're not leaking. Check your end caps. Check joints, connections, and fittings, and check the parts at the head assembly and make sure all of them are operating leak-free. Then walk your drip tape lines and make sure they're dripping as they should be from the start all the way to the finish. While your system will work perfectly fine sitting directly on top of the soil, there are cases where it makes sense to bury it under a few inches of dirt or mulch. If you want more information on how to decide whether it's worth it to bury your drip tape, check out the video on Can You Bury Your Drip Tape in the top right or description below. If you're ready to get your Drip Depot Irrigation Small Farm Kit, you can find them at the link on screen now.